Hi, I'm James Floyd for ClubJade.net, and I'm here with Patricia Reedy, the author of the middle school adaptation novelizations of the prequel trilogy. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. All right. Well, um, recently you just did a Star Wars Reads Day uh, panel here at Conjecture in San Diego, and you um, got to read from, from your prequel novelizations. What was uh, one of your favorite scenes to read? It was, uh, well, Mark Biagi picked most of them. Uh, it was the first time I'd read, uh, read with a voice actor doing the voices. So we kind of, I wasn't quite sure what the parameters would be. So he picked the scenes that, and he did a fabulous job. He picked scenes that had both uh, description for me to read and dialogue for him to read. And uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I would uh, I would love to 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 do more of that with the, the the different. It's always fun to hear your work read with with the voices with with somebody yeah. doing the voices. And uh, so one of those fun. scenes that you have did today was from Phantom Menace. It was it was yes. reading the dinner table scene in Shmi's house. Yes. Um, and so tell us about how you used um, Amidala's point of view. Well. Um, in that particular scene, that particular scene was very tricky because uh, in the movie, the camera focuses first on Amidala and uh, Anakin and Shmi talking to each other, and then it kind of moves down the table and focuses on Qui-Gon. And the logical person to use as the viewpoint for the first part of the scene was Amidala. And so that's what I chose, and I got halfway through the scene, and I realized, wait, the camera's now focusing down the table. Either I'm going to have to split the scene in half, or I'm going to have to continue to use Amidala and figure out some way to make that work. And uh, it was it, it was one of the things where the camera can do things that the the, the written word in a book is more difficult to do. Um, what I was trying to do in the whole novelization was to stick with a, a tight, subjective, third-person viewpoint. Um, a lot of novelizations are omniscient because that's what, or camera eye, because that's what the camera does. That's where you're starting from. And sticking with a, a subjective viewpoint was a lot trickier than I thought it was going to be turning it, turning it that way. And I had picked Amidala's viewpoint there, and um, that was... Um, it was it was it was a little tricky to pull off because I had to keep interjecting her reactions to what was going down on down at the other end of the table, so you didn't forget that it was her viewpoint. And and one of the other tricks that you kind of or one of the challenges that you had was that you know Amidala is thinking about herself as yes. Amidala, but yes, in the movie whole, she's in that disguise. Whole question, yes, um, people think of themselves by their names, and at that particular point. Um, George Lucas and Lucasfilms had not yet decided what Amidala's real name was, um, whether Padme was simply a, a total alias or whether it was part of her real name. And as it developed, eventually they decided it was part of her real name um, and that, that her real name was Padme. So they decided, but they didn't decide that until the second movie. So in the first movie, we went round Robin Hood's barn several times trying to decide what to call her when she's in disguise. And I, I you know, we made the, the various different arguments, but as far as we knew at that time, Amidala was her real name and Padme was an alias. And therefore she would think of herself as who she really is. So we didn't do the, the surprise thing in the book because she knew who she was, <laughs> so you couldn't really keep it secret from her. like, the, I surprised everyone reader. else. Yeah. They were all shocked. Yeah, you couldn't really keep it secret from the reader. Um, but that has its own advantages because then the reader's in on it, and that always makes it's, it's always kind of fun when the reader knows more than the characters do. And in that case, I could make it so that the, the, that the reader knows that this is, this is Padme Amidala, this is the queen, and none of the other characters know that, so the reader's in on the big secret. Cool. Um, so what are some of the challenges of writing a novelization as opposed to writing you know, your own original works? Um, well, part of it for me was uh, doing the things that you can't do in a movie, which is the interior of dialogue and uh, you know, the internal and emotional point of view in a movie. That's all you know, the, 
all you see is the external stuff. It's all what the, the actors portray. I didn't have those visuals. I was making it all up. The, uh, um, the Probably one of the biggest challenges in the first book was, you know that big scene that's five minutes at the end of the movie where they're fighting with Darth Maul and, you know, and it's, it's like five minutes? That entire five minute sequence in the script, which was what I had to work with, the script said, the Jedi fight. That's what it said. And I had no idea. <laughs> so, so, I, so no you know, locations. I was, making, or... I was making it up, and I had to hope it would be at least close to, to, to what the final battle looked like. Uh, because I was, I was, that's the other problem, is that I had to turn in the, my final draft uh, well over six months before, around about Thanksgiving, a bit a little before Thanksgiving, I had to turn in my final draft and get the copy edit done by the first weeks in December. And the, the film didn't come out till May. They were still editing. They were still editing and adjusting and, and, and doing things. And, uh, uh, but I had to be done because they had to get it into production. And uh, you know, it takes that long to produce a book. Um, so uh, it was trying to, to do things without, and I mean, I'd call them up and say, you know, what color are the bars? And they, you know, in the, the you know, the, the, the ray bars mm -hmm. and say, what? We don't know. Uh -oh. They haven't done those yet. And I go, okay, I'll just say light. <laughs> you know, because I, I really wanted to put the color in so it matched, but they hadn't done it yet, so I couldn't. Hmm. And then you, you mentioned in the, in the panel that also you had to do a, a couple of rewrites where there was a lot of FedExing back yes, and forth. Yes, there were that... several times when there was a lot of FedExing back and forth because in the, the shooting, in the, the, the last, in December, they had, it's, it's, every time I worked on those books, I worked over Christmas. I would go home and I would say, you know, okay, I got another rewrite. I'm going to be upstairs half the time. And my parents would go, oh, dear. And, you know, but fortunately in my family, saying I have to work is an ultimate excuse for anything. <laughs> so, so they were okay with it, even over Christmas. But, uh, uh, you know, I had several times when I had to, to, to do stuff. And it was getting it last-minute changes you know, at the very last possible minute for production. Can, can you talk about any of those so last minute I, changes? It's hard to even remember now. It's okay. been it's been so long. Stuff that um, had to get cut. The specifics, or... but uh, it was usually s scenes that had to be added or scenes that had things about a scene that had to be changed because they cut something, you know, permanently and completely. Oh, so it wouldn't make sense and, now. The scene that, is like yeah, oh. it really wouldn't. Um, okay. All right, and tell us what other books you're working on right now. Um, well, at the moment, I just finished the third book of the Frontier Magic uh, trilogy. And I'm kind of thrashing around trying to figure out what I'm going to do, do for the next one. I've got more ideas than I know what to do with, but none of them are quite gelling just yet. So I'm, I'm kind of okay. between books. Okay, so tell us about that series and then some, maybe some of your other series for, for your well, readers, for um, our readers that don't know. Frontier Magic um, is a series in which um, the Ice Age lasted, uh, the, the, the background and the world building is the part that I, I think is really fun. Um, the Ice Age lasted a little longer than it did in real life, uh, so a lot of the Ice Age critters are still around. Um, and there are magical critters as well, and there are, of course, magic works. And the setting is an alternate history uh, United States um, in which uh, my, my main character is the, the 13th out of 14 children. She's the twin sister of a um, uh, seventh son of a seventh son. And so he's considered to be a fabulous magician and you know, doing all this great stuff. And she's considered unlucky 13. And her parents, they move her out to the edge of the frontier, which is the Mississippi River, uh, which they call the Mammoth River, um, which is the, the, the very edge of the part of the continent that's safe for people mm -hmm. to live in. Um, Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson were both seven sons of seven sons, and they collaborated to put up this magical barrier around, uh, goes up the Mississippi and then cuts across and, and across the St. Lawrence Seaway. And it protects that chunk of North America from all of these magical and 
uh, ex now in real life extinct, mm. but uh, uh, tremendously dangerous wildlife, um, which has slowed up people moving in. And um, uh, so they're, they, she grows up right on, essentially on the edge of the frontier. People are just beginning to move across the river and uh, uh, it's about her growing up and figuring out that being a 13th child may not be such a bad thing and, and then explore, you know, going into, into the, the first just across the river okay. and then into the far west. So in, into the wilderness. and Yes. Lewis and Clark never came back. Very interesting. Well, cool. Well, I thank you for Sorry. taking the time to, to talk with us, Patricia. And You're welcome. Good luck, and thanks for being here on Star Wars Reads Day. Thank you. All right. It was fun.